Yesterday, we learned a little bit about um, the, the strange uh, <clears throat> Torah disease called Tzorat. Tzorat. And essentially what it was, was a discoloration of the skin. Okay, now there's also, that was, that was in general, the discoloration of the skin, it was a co color white. And it said, we learned that there were generally four different colors of white. There was the Sait and there was the Beherit and there was a sub uh, whiteness of both of them, which was called Sapachat. And that the most white of them all was the color of snow. It says white like snow, and the least was the white of an egg. And if it was, if it deviated from these colors, then it wasn't impure. And it had to have a hair growing in it, <clears throat> or <clears throat> it became um, healed a little bit in the middle of this whiteness. And then the person became impure. Impure. Okay, here, let's now let's go to, to here we go. What type of impurity is it says? And also the person was closed up if he was, if he wasn't sure if he was impure or not, they would close them up and see if the impurity spread out or if the signs appeared. And if they did, then they would close them up or then they would close them up another week and then he would become impure after that. Okay, what happens when he's, he's, he is, he uh, is, he is declared impure. Okay, so let's, let's find this. All right, we're, not, we're in the book, like we said before, we're in this book called Mitzvot Hashem, the commandments of God. It lists all the 613 commandments, 248 positive commandments, and 365 prohibitions that are uh, in the Torah, according to the Maimonides. This is according to Maimonides. Moses ben Maimon, Moshe ben Maimon. But so now let's look and see what happens. What happens when the person is actually declared to be impure? Let me try to find it over here. One second. Okay. Okay. Bain Matsura Musgar, whether we're talking about a Matsura that he is closed up, in other words, he's just in the intermediate stages, we don't know if he finally has the signs of impurity. Bain Matsura Muklat are when we see that he does have the signs of impurity. And this whole entire period, right, he can be closed up for one week, sometimes even for two weeks. Well, they check to see if what the developments are, if it develops into um, impure signs or if it doesn't develop. In any case, in all of these cases, he is what's called an avatuma. A avatuma is a level that is the highest level of impurity, the worst level of impurity that there can be, except for a dead body itself. And anyone who touches a dead body is called an avatuma. And here, this person, he just has a discoloration of his skin, and he's called an avatum. And now there's other things that also, without touching a dead body, they become what's called an avatum, a father of tuma. And that's what's called a zav. Next week, we're going to learn about the zav. The zav is a person that has some sort of a strange, like a, a pus-like sort of emission, a man. And for a woman, it's like a, a, a blood emission. And that's a different type of impurity, which we're going to learn about that next week. Again, to remind you, this is only really relevant at the time of the temple. But we'll see. He's according to this opinion. Even nowadays, there can be such a thing as a matzora. Let's have a look and see. When a person is finally determined or even suspected of having the signs of uh, of uh, being impure for tzorat, as he is an avatuma and metame adam v'kelim. And if he touches another person, then that person, because what's what we call a rishon, 
number one impurity. And he, that person also can't go into the temple. But the, the, whoever he touches has to go to the mikveh and wait for one day. And then a man or vessels, if he touched them. If it touches a, if this person, <clears throat> this Matsura, touches a clay vessel, clay vessels have a special law in the Torah. They don't become impure from the outside, only in the inside, the avir. <clears throat> If he touches them, and also not only if he touches them, but if he lifts something up that a man is standing on, then also the man becomes impure. And also mishkav emotion. Also, if he sits on something, sits on something. Let's say doesn't actually touch it. Let's say it's a chair, and the chair has on it a uh, hundred pillows, and he sits on the top pillow. Pillow. That's the moshav. Or a bed has a hundred mattresses, and he <clears throat> lays down on them. All of them become impure. But a matzora is worse than a zav. Why? Because a matzora defiles, def makes impure anything that's in the house with him, the same room. Im bo nitma anyone. If he's sitting in a room and anyone comes in that room, is, is they're all impure. In fact, anyone comes in the house in, in certain conditions under the same roof, uh, whether a humans or peep or vessels go into the room, they're impure. Even though it doesn't touch them, just in the same overhang makes things impure. And they become Even if it doesn't touch the nevertheless, they become a number one level in Tuma. Number one level in Tuma means they can also touch another person and make them another two level of Tuma, which that all makes them forbidden to go into the temple. The Mitzorah, person who is declared a Mitzorah, he has to be evicted from the city in the land of Israel. In the time they were in the desert, he was evicted from the whole camp. If there is a wall in the city, if there's a wall in the city, it's put outside the. The only difference between a matsora that is suspected and those, he has the signs that could develop into final. Let's say it doesn't have hairs in it yet, but as soon as he has the signs, even even the preliminary signs, right? Like skin turns white, and it's not uh, it doesn't have any hairs on it. It doesn't spread out or whatever. But he's just suspected that's called muskar. He's closed up for one week or for, sometimes for two weeks. <clears throat> he's the exact same law as if the white hairs do, do come. They're both impure. The difference is Priya the Parima. Priya says he has to tear his garments and he has to let his he has to let his hair grow and he has to tear his garments. We're going to learn that in a, in a moment. And also when he becomes pure. Is, is process of becoming pure if the person was just musgar, it was just suspected, then if it turns out that he didn't have the signs, then he's automatically, okay, that's it, doesn't have to do anything. But if he does have the final signs, like white hair grows up in the middle of this, or it spreads out, whatever, then he has to shave all the hair of his body, and he brings uh, birds. Birds, which we're going to learn. It's going to be in the next... Uh, law. Everyone is kosher to determine whether the it is um, sorat if it's gone or if it's there, but only a coin. There has to be a coin that actually makes the declaration. For instance, if the coin happens to be uh, a child or ignoramus or doesn't know the law. Then he takes a wise person, a person who knows the law. The person who knows the law says that this man is impure. And the Kohen declares, yeah, but he has, there has to be a Kohen that declares this man is impure, or if it was suspected, then he is pure. Here he says an interesting thing. This law applies to men and women, Zachar and Akeba. Both men and women can become impure. The call Makom in every place, not in others outside of Israel. Who calls a man at any time 
Sheyesh Baki Bamaros Nagoyim. Any place that there is anyone who is an expert in the different shades and the different colors, which I don't know if there is anybody now, but interestingly, it does not depend on the Holy Temple at all. Okay, a lot of this is going to be next week. We're going to learn about this in Sima Kufai and Tess when it talks about in Parsha's Matsura about purifying it. Okay, let's 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 just skip this one. Let's do the next one because I want to go to the laws. This is talking about <clears throat> some, what's called a nesek. A nesek is um, is a, a tzorat of the the head. If a person loses his hair and then there grows up like yellow hairs side, then that person is also impure. It's forbidden. To shave off these hairs. This is also says the same exactly the same thing. This applies everywhere. The front of the head, it's only if the back of the head is bald and etc. Okay, the, the, let's do this next law. A positive commandment. The a person who has been officially declared to be a Matsura, again, he had this white spot that was bigger than the size of a dime or whatever. And there grew up in it white hairs or a little patch of healthy skin developed in the middle, or he was closed up and it spread out. <clears throat> or if it was in the head, we're going to learn there's also a type on, on garments, also. We're going to learn the thing of the garments. And there's Matsura in the garments. And next week, we're going to learn that there was also Tsarat in houses. Sometimes you had to tear the whole house down. We'll see. A positive commandment that the Matsura, <clears throat> once he is been determined to be complete, 100% Mitzora. He has to tear his garments. He has to let his hair grow. And he has to cover over his head like a, a mourner. Nowadays, we don't cover the hair like a mourner. They used to do it. And he has to yell out, Tommy, Tommy, so people keep away from him. So that everyone shall know that he is impure. Like it says, Hatsurua Sherboanega, like it says, the tsurur that has this, uh, whatever it is, this, this blight of tsarat, begadav yu purumim, his garments should be torn, rosho ye purua, his hair should be let to grow, bal safam yate, and he should, this means that he should wear like a, a veil over his head, whatever, but tame tame yikare, and he has to yell out, tame tame, I am impure. This means even the Kohen Gadol, even the high priest, that he, it is forbidden for him to tear his garments, and it is forbidden for him to let his hair grow. Nevertheless, he has to let his hair grow and tear his garments and let his hair grow if he happens to be a Matsura. Why? Because Sha'ase, because a positive commandment pushes away the negative commandment. It's a positive commandment that he must tear his garments. And there's a negative commandment that a coin, a, a high priest is not allowed to. And the positive commandment pushes away the negative commandment. Vasur, and it is forbidden, Peshila Shalom, Ka'avel. It's like a mourner, a person, God forbid, if someone, one of his immediate relatives that he has to mourn for, his father, his mother, his brother, his sister, his son, his daughter, or his wife, if they pass away. So there's certain laws of mourning that he has to observe. Well, the Mitzorah has to observe those laws also. You're not supposed to say hello to him, shalom. He certainly does not say shalom to anyone. It's, it's forbidden for him to get a haircut or to wash his garments. Okay, but Isha Mitzorah, what if a woman, she has this Mitzorah, women can also have it. She does not let her let her hair grow, and she does not uh, tear her garments, and she does not put a veil over her head like others, but she does have to sit outside of the city, and she does have to yell out, Tome, Tome, I am impure, I'm impure, in order to advertise the fact that she's impure, people should keep away from her, keep away from her, because if they touch her, they become also impure, albeit a, a lower level of impurity, but still impure. <clears throat> So 
says also really this this really applies to everyone. Call it to me, I'm a tamim. Let him any one who is impure. This this is relevant to the time of the temple. Person is impure, and they to the degree that they can make others impure, they have to advertise the fact to everyone so that people will keep away from them. Okay, strange law, positive commandment. There is what we call the plague, this, this Mitzorah in garments. Garments could be that a person has a garment and the garment has the, the, a discoloration on it, which makes it, uh, which makes it, uh, how do you say, uh, accused, uh, uh, possibly, Mitzorah. And we'll see if the color changes, then he certainly is. And you have to, sometimes you have to burn the garment, sometimes you just cut out the part. And we'll, I want to learn this inside also. Like it says, a big head, if it's negat soras, sometimes a garment. And also, like I said, houses also, but we'll learn that next week. A house also can be. Gimel Simani Tuma, there's three signs of Tuma of impurity are in garments. Green, red, and spreading out. If the garment also all of a sudden gets a green patch in it, but this is only relevant to white garments. We're going to see this whole thing only applies to white garments. Colored garments, even if they're colored by whatever it is, paint fell on it or something, cannot have this. It has to be a white garment. We'll see. It's a white garment. All of a sudden, he sees this green patch on it. What, what type of green? The most bright green there can possibly be the greenest of the green deep green or red this is the most red of the red i guess something like on a traffic light is green light like it says there has to be someone who knows exactly what the colors are and as far as i know there's no one in our generation that knows what the a garment that has in this green color or red color it it gets you have to lock the garment away for seven days. On the seventh day comes an expert and looks at it and sees if the color spread out from where it was, then the garment has to be burned. If the color, if the garment, this color stays where it was and it doesn't spread out, or the garment becomes, let's say, less bright or strong than it was before, or it increases in the color, it becomes more red or more green, but it doesn't spread out, then you just wash the place where it was, the garment, out around the this, around the, the color, and you close it up another time. And if the second at the end of the second week, which comes to be the 13th day, you see that the color is either <clears throat> is, is let's say a little bit weaker than it was in the beginning so therefore you just wash the whole thing off and it's okay if the color changes the red becomes green the, the green becomes red or the red becomes green then you tear the part only that part that discolored and you burn that part you can you can so put a patch on it and Imagine if though the same color that was before, if this the color just stays the same, it doesn't become stronger, it doesn't become weaker. So, so far we've employed this. If the color becomes, stays where it is, <clears throat> if the color stays where it is, or it becomes, it, it doesn't, but the, the color becomes, the color changes to a little bit stronger green or weaker green. In other words, it keeps the same color, but the color changes a little bit. So you just take out the place where the color is, and that's okay. If the color spreads out, then the whole thing is impure. If the color changes where it is, you also, you just cut out that place where the color is. If the color stays where it is, and... 
If the color after you've washed it and you cut out the place, if it stays where it is, then you have to, the, the garment is forbidden to get any pleasure from, and the whole, you have to burn the whole thing. Sometimes it can be just like the, 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 the just the the, the 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 strings that go horizontally are have the color. Sometimes vertically have the color. Okay. In any case, a garment can be also have the soras in it. The only garments that are impure is if they are made of wool, <clears throat> or if they are made of linen. And they are like about one inch on one inch, maybe a little bit bigger, two inches on two inches, three fingers on three fingers. It had the garment has to be white and not colored, whether it's colored by man or it's colored by, let's say it gets you know discolored by naturally. If it's discolored, it doesn't become impure. Only white garments. It can be, let's say, only the the warp, whatever it is, and the woof, the, the, the strings that go there, if, if either one of them is white or linen, then they become, then it can become impure. Okay, there's also another exception, and that is leather garments, cle ore, <clears throat> that were, how do you say, tanned from an animal, a kosher animal. And it has to be an animal from the, the on the dry land. Leather, even if it's colored, even if they're colored, you know, but usually leather is usually brown, <clears throat> also can be impure. The green, this green color, red color, like we said before. Any of these things that become impure, if you bring one kazayat, a kazayat is like this, the, about an ounce of this garment into a house, then everything that's in the house becomes impure, just like if a person that's at Sorat. This is in garments, whether they belong to a man or a woman, but not in garments that belong to a non-Jew. This is relevant, just like a, a non-Jew cannot have this impurity of Sorat. This is in every place, every time, like we mentioned before, etc. Okay, now let's look at the Chumash and see these sentences. If it makes sense to us, ready? Here we go. One minute. Isha, Isha. This is where we began today. In the head. Yeah. If he has negat in this head or in the beard. What does it mean? The, the head or the beard, hair falls out. The coin sees the nega, And behold, it's a little bit deeper than the skin. And there is a little bit of... Blondish hair that group that is in it. So the coin says that's it. He is impure. It's called a nesic on his head or on his beard. And there's a little bit of the beard or the hair of the head fills falls off. Like we said, it falls off. The, the hair falls, it becomes bald. And this a yellow hair grows up in it. That's it. If the coin sees the ne this nesic, this hair of the head falling out. And uh, the color is not, there's no discoloration over there. And it's all uh, black hair grows up in it. Then um, he, close, he he locks the person up for seven days. And then after he looks in the seventh day, if it didn't spread out and there is no yellowish hair, then the person is, he, 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 he uh, shaves the whole thing off, the nesic. He shaves, he shaves off all of his hair and this, but this discolored place, he doesn't shave off and 
he sits another seven days. The coin comes after the second seven days. And if it didn't spread out, then he's pure. No problem. If it's spread out, then afterwards, the coin says he's okay. But then afterwards it spreads out, then he becomes impure. One second. Okay. Matsurua Sherbo Hanega. This person is a Tsurua, has Tsurat, and he has this plague, whatever it is, of Nega, he has this disease. The Gadavia Prumim, his garment should be torn. Rosho Yaprua, his hair should be <coughs> unkempt. But Al Safam Yatet, and he has to cover over. His face to the, the top of his lip. But tummy tummy yikore, and he has to call out, I'm impure, I'm impure. And Rashi says, prumim means his garment should be crewing, torn. Perua, what does it mean? Perua means he has to let his hair grow. Al Safam Yate, he has to cover over his head to his lip, it says to like a evil, like a, a vel, like a, a mourner. And he has to yell out, Mashmi, he has to let everybody know that he is impure. Call Yom Yashir Negabo, all the days that he is impure, Tame Tame, 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 who is impure. Badad Yashiv, he has to live alone, Mechutz Lamachan Moshevo, outside of the camp. <clears throat> what does it mean, Badad Yashiv? You said, well, maybe you might think, let's say if there's two or three or more people that have this disease, maybe they can sit together. He says, no, he has to sit alone. That the other Tameim should not sit with him. Why not? The rabbis say, other impurities, they can li live together. The main thing is you don't increase impurity in the world. And he's not increasing. He's sitting with other people that are impure. What's wrong with that? It says, one of the reasons, perhaps the main reason that there is this weird impurity is because of what's called Lashon Hora, seeing negative or harmful things about other Jews. He says harmful speech, but not only it's, it's forbidden to say harmful speech about anybody. That's the fact. But if he does it with a Jew, he gets punished. This weird punishment. What is the weird punishment? This Tzorat comes as, as a result. So because he separated be between people because of Lush and Hora, because of bad speech, right? He went to Shmerel and he said, you know, Beryl is a thief. Then he went to Beryl and he said, you know, Shmerel hates you. So he, he said bad things. He keep, kept people, this guy is a liar. This guy's a cheater. Said bad things about other people because he separated between man and his wife or man and his friend. So therefore he has to be kept, he has to be separated. He cast the oh, what is outside of the camp? Outside of all the three camps. There was the camp of the Shekhinah, the camp of the Levites, and the camp of all the rest of the Jewish people. He had to keep out, outside of all three of them. Vabeged, what about a garment? What about a garment? If he has neged saras and a garment, if it's a garment of wool or if it's a garment of linen, Okay, so some say, we're going to learn this next week, that what happens? First of all, a person, if he, if he insists on speaking Lush and Hora, so he, uh, the, the, the plague hits his house first. And then after that, it hits his garments, comes closer, and then finally it hits him. So if he doesn't take the lesson. Okay, we'll learn tomorrow, God willing, some of the explanations about this. The Ramban has a beautiful explanation, the Ora Chaim. What is, what is this thing about impurity in the garments? Right? Like the Rambam says, this is a totally unnatural thing. There's no such thing in the world. Sometimes people get discolorations on their skin. That could be, right? A discoloration on the skin, it could be. And we have to explain, no, it's really from the Torah. But this is totally no way you can explain this according to nature. And that's like all the laws that we just finished explaining that if the if it comes if the color is green or if it's red, then they lock them up 
And if the red changes to green, or the green changes to red, or the other signs, then it becomes impure. Sometimes you can just cut out the part. Sometimes you have to burn the whole garment. As we'll talk about, God willing, tomorrow. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now, we learned a little bit about this strange disease that says over here is really relevant nowadays. If there's anyone who really knows how to discern and judge the colors. See you tomorrow, 8.15.